Please welcome on stage Markus Günther and Christopher Lubeck. Thank you. Thank you. Today we want to talk about hybrid CMS and we, we all love the web. We work with the web. We make our living out of the web and we all became digital natives somehow. We, we work with the web. We share our memories on Facebook, on Twitter, whatever, especially me on Twitter. And <laughs> Uh, and we probably all know this guy and we need to thank Tim Berners-Lee and his team that he is inventing the World Wide Web and in 1991 HTML 1.0 came to life. So back then everything was static. If you edit content you need to write markup. If you want to change the content you need to write markup and there was no dynamical thing you could use CGI scripts for making forms, but with, like <laughs> with, with PHP and Java and other languages, we, we get the dynamic part into that World Wide Web thingy. So we, we have the power now to make online shops. We can interact with the user and we can create content management systems so that even people that are not possible uh, that, that not being able to write code and markup can edit things like in MS Word or whatever tool you want to choose. And you probably all know this guy. <laughs> I guess <laughs> maybe ninety percent of the audience. Um, we also need to thank Casper that he shares his love and his passion and developed type of three in nineteen ninety seven nineteen ninety seven and uh, without Tabris we, we all won't be here. And all this content management stuff that we are able to edit content and generate markup what the browser I in the end consumes uh, came with some trade-offs. So um, if we have a CMS we are not in the possibility to just use a cheap web space because uh, in the beginning, we just write markup, throw it on the server, the browser can request it, we consume it, and then everything was there. And now we need a web server. The web server has Apache or Nginx, so if you use Java, you have Tomcat. And you also need a program language like PHP, Java, Ruby, whatever. And how we all orchestrate these things and uh, how we scale it if we have a big online shop or high traffic site and yeah. yeah so the question is um, is there something else that we can use and um, I think many of you maybe stumbled over it and um, so since 2016 um, the, the term Jamstack for an architecture where you mainly have a static publishing of your site or application was was coined and um, the, the underlying technology of static site generators was um, uh, possible years before, of course, but um, so with Jamstack, this whole concept has a name and um, it's not really complex, but it's a totally different thinking model than the traditional you have PHP database and everything on a web server thing where you tend to use a monolith and put everything in a CMS and build more and more complex systems. So Jamstack, so you can think of going back a little and thinking about having a static site and um, using JavaScript APIs and static markup to drive your sites and applications, even shops or larger, larger systems. So um, static sites are popular because it's so easy to deploy that, to scale it. And Jamstack is built around JavaScript on the client to do all the interesting stuff, APIs for everything where you need dynamic and uh, dynamic uh, functionality and connection to other services, and uh, finally the markup that you generate uh, in front, uh, so you can much more easily distribute all your sites. Um, and if you have a look at how we traditionally um, 
serve a CMS request or an online shop, um, most systems get a request from the browser. So the browser wants some markup or asset. And uh, in the case of the markup, the CMS system or online shop has to look up, do I already have it? Maybe there's a whole layer of caching involved. It goes back to a database or other systems, a search index, looks it up, does some complex rendering, and finally returns that to the browser. So as I said, there can be a many layers of caching and complex stuff and a varnish in front of that to make it scalable. To distribute it is even a more complex task, shared sessions and all that stuff, load balancers. So you shift all your problems to the deployment and uh, operating side. So Jamstack, on the other hand, is like a pull, uh, push based uh, system where you have some tool like a static site generator, Yugo, Jekyll, uh, Gatsby, or there are literally thousands of them. and using all kinds of technologies and um, also all kinds of uh, content storage formats or connection to APIs. And they generate the content. It's all mostly based on files. You distribute the files to a web server or to a hosting service and the browser just fetches the finished product. So all the latency in the initial request is basically gone and all the distribution and operating issues are gone. So what you have to do is think about APIs and how to restructure your application. Yeah, so main benefits, faster performance, so you can serve pre-built stuff, you have easy usage of CDN, global distribution, also in countries where maybe your server is not reachable. Um, we, we actually have that with a lot of clients and it's more secure because you have no running system which needs security updates, uh, less vulnerabilities, it's much less expensive, it's eco-friendly and uh, it's, it's infinitely scalable. So if your APIs are scalable too. And the, the bonus can be that you also can uh, reach a better developer experience because you can have faster round trips and less complex setups uh, with a monolith and all the tools you need in runtime also on a developer machine. And you can have better decoupling between backend and frontend technologies. Yeah, so question is how can we combine that with NEOS? Yeah, we at the NEOS conference and obviously we all NEOS developers or integrators and editors and frontend guys will make this shine. Um, and how we now can achieve that we can use NEOS for the Jamstack. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, who haven't heard something about Gatsby or is using Gatsby on for documentation side or something like that? Awesome. So if you have a system like Gatsby that is mainly just a site generator or a static site generator, um, you can use it for nearly everything. The most people started with Jekyll for building documentation pages for their package on GitHub and then pushing the content to GitHub pages and everything is fine. And with uh, Gatsby, a new player started in 2016, I guess. Um, and their approach was to use nearly every content you can get. So you can use multi-channel data sources. You can say, I have a CSV file, I have a JSON, I have uh, API service from Canto Contentful, or I consume data from a CMS like Neos, WordPress, Drupal, or whatever. And Gatsby defines how you consume this data and how you need to transform it so that can Gatsby uh, build the static markup out of it. And the end is just HTML with a React application. So Gatsby is using the React framework and GraphQL for getting all the data. So even images in Gatsby will be fetched with GraphQL. So uh, when we want to use Gatsby with Neos, we don't need to do that much because Neos also uses nodes and we have an awesome package from Bastian for getting a GraphQL API for Neos. So if we are creating our content types and news and adding this awesome package from Bastion. We 
already can consume the data via this API from GraphQL and just need a package so that Gatsby can understand the JSON data we get from NEOS, build the site and then deploy it to our web service or to the Netlify platform. So on the NEO side, we just compose a require uh, the package from, the from Bastion, and then we can use GraphQL in the end. Or yesterday I learned that we can even use a package from T3N. And um, you can even write an own or create just a JSON rendering from NEOS. It doesn't depend. You just need to consume your data in JSON or something like CSV, XML, or whatever, so that Gatsby can understand it and can transform it. So for Gatsby itself, you need to create a package for Drupal, WordPress, Markdown, CSV. There are plenty of uh, source packages already. Um, and for Neos, I created an own package. It's not public yet because it's not so polished yet. Um, but in the end, you just need to yarn at Gatsby source Neos to your starter kit from Gatsby. You add this configuration with the base URL and define uh, yeah, kind of a URL prefix or something like that. And then Gatsby understands all these things from Neos. You can use it in your Gatsby build step and then you're just done. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, a good, uh, good thing to, to use Gatsby and, and Neos as a content API. So I think one, one drawback is that you lose the preview capability in the back end yeah. unless you have a separate rendering for that. But uh, sometimes it's just enough to have a custom edit mode or you can also have a separate rendering just for the, for the back end of your content. And some sites that's also uh, that's needed if you have highly dynamic applications because you usually don't want to edit these directly. But so I had the question like maybe one year ago, so can we use Neos as a static site generator? And I also asked myself, can we even go without a database, so have something fully static? And I started with an experiment called Photon. Um, if you know photons, physics, uh, it's uh, duality of the particles. It's a wave, it's a particle, and yeah, I needed a name, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the idea behind Photon is um, not to have only one static site generator that maybe you know something like static file publishing in a CMS where you just write every page to a file and that's it. I, I wanted to have building blocks where you can think about your publishing. We do a lot of projects, or not a lot, but many projects in the recent time where we have custom publishing architectures and concepts. So, and what I'm missing is having some general building blocks to think about how should a publishing pipeline or something work for you? What are your targets? And not only having this pull model of rendering content in the browser. And so what I came up with, and this is really rough terrain, um, is a generator concept, really basic. It's something that gener generates your content. So of course, we have Fusion, which is a nice and uh, declarative uh, way to describe something. And we can also describe the static rendering of something, and not only the rendering in, your br in the browser from a request. And one thing which is really just a rough experiment is having a static content repository. And since these are building blocks, we can use different scenarios or combine them. And one scenario I, I, I heard many people are interested in is just having a static publishing from Neos besides having a normal NEOS with a back end where you can log in and edit content. So just having that and additionally publish files for some smaller websites, that's maybe all you need and uh, just publish that to a web space and have a very simple hosting solution. And so what you need is NEOS and the content repository we already have and the fusion based um, Photon generator, and I, I started since yesterday, it was a little bit late with the preparation, um, with a package to integrate that with Neos. So 
What you can do now, it's already public, is require these packages. Um, I only tested it, it with a NEOS demo site, and there are really a lot of rough edges, but I think we, we can uh, transform it to s something we can work on and, and use in, in a lot of projects. Is um, So y you have these uh, packages and install it besides your normal NEOS site, and then you can generate static content. So I dared to do a demo for that, and let's see how, how it works out. So, yes. So, I prepared a little Neos demo site. And uh, nothing fancy, only basic Neos demo installed and got it running. And now, if I go to that and I think I have these yeah, in history. Composer required these packages. Dun, 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 dun. Yes. Let's see. There's a new CLI command. So the the interface there is no interface for that yet, yet. it's just CLI and um, of course you can think about having that connected to the publish button or backend module but um, it's a good start and um, so we have the generate content command which is the entry point into the generator of uh, Photon and I just look up my command generate content the idea in Photon have, uh, is to have different targets. So like the, the, the cases in Neos, we already have like a default case. It's your default target, but maybe you want a different output for print or for something else. And so you can have different targets and you can pass options to the generator. So Photon itself should be extensible. So we all love extensibility in the Neos project. It's somehow... <laughs> um, we, we always think we need that. And um, so I can pass an output folder. I give it a, oh, by the way, can you read that? I make it a little bit larger. Um, pass it in the site package key. And let's see what it does. So it gives it's really rough. It's only an output of the files it writes. And um, if we, we go to the output folder, we can see there's uh, some folders in there. The, the simple NEOS integration just uses the same relative path of the node URI that is resolved to, to place or to publish the file. And But you can come up with your own. Everything is driven by Fusion. It's fully extensible and customizable. We need to have good building blocks in the Photon Fusion package that you can then use to, to drive your custom publishing. So that's the idea. But it comes with a fully working default that we need to, to test out with different sites. And now if, you have, if I start a simple web server there and browse to it, I don't use the, the, the home page. It has some issues with the URLs, with the slash and index. And yeah, we have a working site. It's static. It's really fast. It has all the assets and need, needed no configuration. So that's, uh, that's a good start, I think. And if you do uh, editing, you can just use Neos. publish. Okay, it's still the old content. It's really static. No cheating here. I generate again. And now it's updated. You can upload it to a server, have a running website done. So I think that's, a, that's an interesting start. And 
Um, if I go back to the slides. So that's one scenario. Um, where I started with was another scenario of having a fully static site generator. And the idea is to have a static content repository where um, I think most static site generators have some format of markdown with front matter or YAML or whatever, where you place your content in just in a Git repository. Everything is a Git in a Git repository. You have some build pipeline which runs your tools um, generates the output, places it somewhere, and, and you're done. You have no running system at all. So in scenario one, which I showed you, um, you still have a NEOS website running somewhere. Maybe not public, accessible to everyone, uh, and not generating or not answering the requests, but still you have, have a NEOS system. And, and in that case, you don't need that, but of course you lose one of the main features of NEOS, which is uh, the editing interface. So either you have to come up with something yourself or um, teach your editors how to use YAML and Git and everything, which might not work. But for special cases, I think if you import data or um, for, for more special technical cases, it, it might be a good way. So for documentation, um, think about writing documentation in, in, in a node structure, we all know, and just having Fusion and Flow Query to access that and work with it in a semantic way would be nice. And then we can, that's a really visionary outlook, have a conversion between content in a content repository, which is, is live and in a database and can be used, and we convert it to a static representation, which is like passive, work, uh, living in a Git repository in the long term. And the reason behind that could be that you have a different life cycle in a project. Maybe in the beginning you do a lot of editing and changes and after some time it's, it's really only one time a year or something. So we have customers like that and it would be a great way to start with a good editing interface, get the site up and running and then convert it to something more passive which is cheaper, easier, secure and everything. Yeah, so I think that's I already it. Yeah. Awesome. If you yeah. <laughs> we, have, we have some minutes left, so maybe some questions. Yeah, if you have a question. Anyone? Almost everybody is an expert. <laughs> Ah, great. <laughs> uh, I was wondering how, uh, I didn't really get that static content repository. How do, how do you store the data? Is that in JSON Shall, shall I show? Then? Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, okay, so um, I have to, to resync the monitors. Um, yeah, so like I said, it's really rough. It, it's, it's working in a basic way. Um, there might be a lot of bugs. And the idea is, um, I have to change the project. Um, so you can find it all on, on GitHub. Um, there is a lots of uh, Flowpack Photon packages because I split it in different parts and there's a demo package where uh, the, the fully static publishing, I started with that to play around with that and the idea is to, for example, have a folder with content and um, you all know this pocket reference and my idea was for the next time I wanted to use a static site generator to build that. It's already built in HTML and CSS with print PDF publishing behind that. And um, I didn't manage to get it working, but or to finish it. But here's, here's an example of how to do that. So you have basically a folder structure. Um, the, the folder names are the, the, the tree of nodes. And then you have YAML files in there for the content. And here, for example, it's, it's a 
it's a namespace reference uh, node, you have node types, you have properties here, and then you have a child node. Child nodes for Neos Fusion are in a folder named like the, the file itself. And so ar array is a child node of type object definition, and these are just properties. And then you can define in a static node types configuration that you have different node types, properties, and some properties are special that you can, um, or child nodes um, can define that they are inline. Um, so child nodes can be folder, but you can also have child nodes inside the YAML file. So that, because usually it would be uh, too much splitting if you split all your nodes to different files. And I think that's only one representation. Much nicer would be a markdown where you have inline nodes um, because that would much better fit articles and everything. I, I usually would much more like to, to work in markdown than in an editing interface. Um, so it depends on the case. So it's the first start and uh, I think we, it could work. And the nice thing is that using this uh, feels like just like having a real content repository because you can use flow query fusion. It just works like the normal thing. Yeah, so you can have a look in the GitHub repo. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Christopher and Markus.